Kitty. So good afternoon, everyone. And today I'm going to talk to, about, uh, to you about a study we conducted to understand genetic control of nodal root angle and, if, and its effect on root distribution, water extraction pattern of mature plants, and its implication for drought adaptation. So the key points from this talk is that seedling nodal root angle is a good indicator of root system architecture in mature plants in sorghum. And we found that seedling nodal root angle influences water extraction pattern and is under strong genetic control. Multiple breeding populations have been screened using high throughput phenotyping platform and controlling genetic regions quantified. And we found that there is a significant association of these genetic regions with yield data collected from dryland breeding trials. So the key question is why investigate nodal root angle? So to quantify that, actually first, the first experiment we conducted was to just understand what sorghum root system looks like. And the first experiment was conducted in soil filled root boxes. These boxes are 60 centimeter deep and 40 centimeter wide and five centimeter thick. We used four genotypes with three replications and individual plants were grown in these boxes. We harvested the plants at every leaf stage, starting from leaf two to leaf six. So in total, we had five harvests. And roots were washed on specially designed pin boats with pins three centimeter apart to maintain the root architecture as seen in the soil. So these photographs shows the root development pattern of sorghum starting from leaf two to leaf six stage. So unlike other cereal, sorghum produces only one seminal root. And the first pair of nodal roots starts to appear around five leaf stage. And we found that there were significant differences in nodal root angle between the four genotypes used in this particular experiment. So nodal root angle was considered as an important root trait for root screening, and f six leaf stage was considered as an important root trait for root screening. And to grow sorghum plants to uh, six leaf stage, we needed a chamber that is 50 centimeter deep. So knowing the difference in nodal root angle at seedling stage, it was important to link these differences with root distribution pattern of mature plants. So again, we used a larger rhizotrons. These rhizotrons are actually 120 centimeter wide and 240 centimeter deep and 10 centimeter thick. And uh, oh my goodness. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Sorry? So these rhizotrons are 240 centimeter leaves. And again, the roots were washed on the pin boards. So this one rhizotron can hold around 400 kg of soil. So I put actually series of photographs to show how intact 400 kg of soil was transferred on the pin board. So the second photograph shows where the glass panel is removed. The photograph, I think so this, the photograph here shows the root differences in root distribution just as seen on the surface of the soil. And then uh, same size intact pin board was inserted in 400 kg soil with the help of some, a ton of weight. The backing board was removed. So this photograph here shows the backing board was removed. And you can see here the intact 400 kg soil on the pin board. And the ra last photograph shows wash root system on the pin board. In this particular experiment, we use two contrasting genotypes. So these genotypes varied only in nodal root angle at seedling stage to avoid any confounding effect of plant size. 
So these photographs shows the contrasting root development pattern between the two lines. So the photograph on your left represents narrow angle line. And you can see here the narrow angle line has more steeper root system, much better root occupancy, and more root distribution at depth. In contrast, the wide angle line has shallow root system and no more branching here. So actually, I've combined all these photographs and put together uh, an animation showing the difference in root development between the two lines at every harvest. Hopefully, this movie will work. So this from six leaf stage I'm showing, and you can see here the n narrow angle line on your left has maintained that root distribution steeper root at every harvest. So this photograph shows from six leaf to 16 leaf stage. And, and the next slide shows difference in root distribution from flag leaf stage to uh, mid-grain filling stage. I don't know if it's not working. OK. So knowing the difference in root distribution at mature stage, it was important to link these differences with Oh, OK, somebody else is control. It was important to link these differences with water extraction patterns. So again, we used larger rhizotrons. So, and the whole of those rhizotron was divided into 20 by 20 centimeter grid, and gravimetric water content was measured. So here, the dark orange color represents less gravimetric water content, and the dark blue color represents more gravimetric water content. So the, this heat map shows the difference in water extraction pattern between the two lines. So the top panel represents the wide angle line, and the bottom panel represents the narrow angle line. And you can see here, as expected, the narrow angle line with lighter blue color here shows more water extracted from depth. In contrast, if you look at more yellow color here for wide angle line, suggesting more water extracted from distance. This bar graph shows the statistical differences between the water extraction pattern between the four lines used. So the y-axis represents the percent of total water extracted, and the x-axis represents the distance from the plant line. So for convenience, actually, we di divided the whole chamber into three sections. So 0 to 80 centimeter here represents just below the plant line, 80 to 160 intermediate section, and 160 to 240 furthest away from the plant line. And the light blue and the red bar represents the narrow angle line, and the black bar represents the wide angle line. You can see here the narrow angle line tended to extract a lot more water from just below the plant line, that is 0 to 80 section. In contrast, the black bar here, the wide angle line, extracted a lot more water furthest away from the plant line, suggesting that differences in nodal root angle has an influence on root distribution and water extraction pattern of mature plants. So knowing the importance of nodal root angle at seedling stage, we designed this high throughput phenotyping platform to screen for nodal root angle. Again, we have this soil fill rhizotrons. So these are just two perspex sheets put together with steel clamps. These rhizotrons are held in steel tub with slots. So each of these tub can hold uh, around 50 of these rhizotrons. We also have polycarbonate covers to prevent light to the roots. So in total, we have 10 of these tubs, and we can 
actually grow 500 entries per run. So somebody else is controlling. Is he's doing? So, so we can uh, actually um, grow 500 entries per run, and we harvest the plant at five leaf stage. We also have imaging box to image all these 500 lines in a day. So this imaging box consists of uh, uh, two cameras on both sides, and this camera is operated uh, from a distance through tablet, and we name these tablet as Mr. Lefty and Mr. Righty, very popular name in Australia. And this box also has uh, four lights with filters, and we also have barcoding system to maintain uh, the identity of every line, and the root angle as seen on the surface of the soil is measured. So initially, actually, we screened around um, diverse sorghum lines with inbreds and hybrids. This included inbreds and hybrids, and also included parental lines of mapping population, um, NAMP population, and breeding population. And we found there is significant gen genetic variation for nodal root angle among this population. And this varies from 15 to 50. So then we screened around 213 drills, and we identified four QTL colored here in green, uh, two on chromosome five, one each on chromosome eight, and uh, one on chromosome 10. These QTL explain 58% of the phenotypic variation. However, we found that these QTLs had limited genetic linkage with QTLs for plant size, but they co-located with QTLs for stray green. So this uh, table just shows that there is significant level of association between these markers with yield data collected from dryland breeding trials in three different hybrid combinations. So the genetic regions controlling nodal root angle were also having an effect on yield, and yield volumes increase in the presence of narrow root angle allele. This graph actually shows the results from crop simulation studies, and you can see here there is an, incre there is an increase in relative yield for narrow angle line compared to a standard cultivars for yields varying from 2,000 kg per hectare to 9,000 kg per hectare. And you can see here that there is an increase in yield in the presence of narrow angle line, especially under low yielding environments, but no yield penalty under high yielding environments. So recently, what do I do? Recently, I finished actually screening more than 3,000 lines from three complementary populations, so from the sorghum breeding program in Australia. So we have, I've screened around more than 1,400 lines from a NAM population, more than five, 500 lines from a breeding population, and more than 900 lines from diversity panel. And this box plot here shows the presence of genetic variation among the three populations. And you can see here as di um, f uh, the diversity panel has the widest variation as expected, and this variation narrowing down as we move from more diverse panel to more elite lines in breeding population. Yeah. The heritability is high, and higher heritability for diversity panel shows greater genetic variance observed. So we also have high density SNPs data for all of these populations. So we've combined the phenotypic data with the genotypic data to identify regions of genome significantly associated with nodal root angle in all the three population, and now we're comparing this 
um, QTL across the populations. For example, here we've identified 30 regions common between the three population and five in common in all the three populations. So now what we're doing, we mining these reasons for candidate genes. For example, here we've identified draw one, a deep rooting genes identified in rice, which controls root architecture and increases yield under drought condition. So in summary, you've seen that nodal root angle is a good indicator of root system architecture in mature plants in sorghum. You've seen that nodal root angle influences water extraction pattern and is under strong genetic control. You've also seen breeding population which have been screened using the high throughput phenotyping platform and we found there's a significant association of these regions with yield data collected from dry land breeding trials. So finally, I'd like to thank everybody who has contributed to this project. So you can see I'm not a very big person to transfer that 400 kg of soil. On the pin board, I needed to borrow a lot of muscles from everybody in the group. And also like to thank the funding bodies, GRDC, Australian Government, and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And thanks for your attention.